Hello everyone. Sometimes in Blazor you may want a component to respond to an event that is triggered within one of its nested components. So let me show you two ways to achieve that. So let's go to File, New Project. I'm going to go with Blazor WebAssembly App Empty Template. You can try to look for it here as well. Click next. I'm gonna call it Blazor Descendant to Ancestor. Create next and hit create with the default settings. Okay, so let's go to the pages folder, index razor. I'm gonna get rid of this hello world here. Let's just create a simple diff. We're gonna give it an inline style for the sake of simplicity. This is not how I would normally approach this, but this is just an example to demonstrate something else. So style, let's say background color, maybe this. And let's also give it some padding, maybe 20 pixels. And we're gonna say index here to so that we know uh, or we can identify the component we are in. Okay, so index and then I'm going to add another component let's call it child so I'm just going to kind of reuse this code over here child and let's just maybe change the color and say child Add another component, grandchild. So like uh, multiple nesting, basically. So uh, let's maybe change it here as well. Something like this. Okay, so now we want um some events to be triggered in this grandchild component and we want it to go all the way up to the index component or to the index page uh, which also happens to be to be a component okay so we're gonna use that grandchild component within the child component so it's a grandchild and in the index, we're going to use the child component, right? So we have something like this. Maybe let's just try to run it and see what it looks like. Okay, so basically, let's say we want to click this grandchild component and we want something to be passed all the way up to the index component so one approach you could do th this would be to go to this grandchild component and set a parameter here uh, event callback event callback and let's give it a string we're gonna uh, pass some message to the index component or to the index page. So we're going to say on grandchild click. OK, 
Okay, so you're gonna add the onclick directive. Uh, we're gonna say async. This should probably work with Blazor server as well. Um, so async await on grandchild click. I'm gonna invoke it async async asynchronously. So uh, let's say grandchild says hi. And just in case, um, on click prevent default. Um, Sub propagation. So there we go. And now what you would have to do under normal circumstances is you would have to create pretty much the same callback here in the child component and kind of hook it up to this one here. So we would say uh, basically something like this. Um, except we have an argument here already, so async, let's call it a um, on grandchild, click invoke async. Let's just await it. Right, so basically we pass it on to the next level. So finally in the index page here, we could say on grandchild click, we want to print that message to the console, for example. So we would say a console right line a. So in this case, this message here, grandchild says hi should go to the child component and then from the child component it should end up here in the index page. So let's see if we can apply those changes. We have to rebuild it. Okay, now we should be good to go. Mm. So let's see. Let's click it here, and there we go. It says grandchild says hi. Exactly what we what we typed in here. Yeah, so you can see it works, but you can probably realize that it may come, you know, kind of cumbersome uh, trying to pass it all the way up if you have like several layers that you have to go through to get from one of the descendants to like the top level ancestor. So uh, another approach that possibly could work better in that case, even though I kind of like this approach, um, you know, though it's kind of verbose, I still like it because you can kind of separate, you know, the parent from the child so that the child doesn't really and know much or anything about, you know, its parent. So um, for for that reason, um, I think it's a pretty good approach. However, if you want to reduce this nesting and you want to go directly from uh, your grandchild component to the index component, you may uh, you may try a different approach in which you basically you can use like a state class container that will, you know, 
allow you to pass that uh, you know, event or or something that happened in a nested component directly to to the top level component like here so let's let's try to create that and add new class uh, let's call it index state So in this class, basically gonna have an action. Public event action. It will also take string. Uh, let's call it on grandchild. Click. Uh, and here we're gonna say public void grandchild clicked I'm going to take some text and now we're going to say on branch I'll click invoke and we pass that text here and for our case that's pretty much it yeah so this is what you would have to do and now as if we go to the grandchild component we can remove this all together for now uh, in the meantime we have to register that service so we can inject it so builder services at scoped uh, at scoped I'm gonna say index state and now we can inject it here um, inject index state it's called state so here we're going to say if the user clicks this diff this component then We're gonna invoke that method from the index state class called grandchild clicked and pass that message here as well. So that's it for the grandchild component. As for the child component, we can remove this completely because we're gonna go directly from the child to the index page or the index component so here we also have to inject the uh, index state class um, instance of that class so let's say state let's add code section here I'm gonna say protected override on initialized I no longer need this so let's maybe just create another method here private void maybe display message and this is string text and here we go state on grandchild click we're gonna subscribe to this event this action we're gonna say display message and the display message part we're gonna say console right line and we are gonna print this text like before and just to be you know perfectly correct we're gonna implement the disposable interface
and now we're gonna and this dispose method we're gonna unsubscribe from the display message or from this uh, this event here All right so Uh, sorry, it should be public. All right, so now it should be should be good, I think. Okay, so we go over here once again. We hit the or click the grandchild, and it does say hi to its ancestor. So there you go, two ways to approach the same problem. As I said before, the downside of the second approach is that the child or, or one of the descendants has to share something with uh, you know one, one of its ancestors. So I don't really like it, I guess, but it kind of saves you, you know, some copying and pasting and you can easily connect like a low level uh, component to to some top level one like in this case may, maybe it's not that much of a hassle yet but if you had like you know five levels or maybe more well maybe they you should also <laughs> reconsider your design but the idea here is that you know you can go directly from the uh, descendant to the ancestor so anyway i hope you find this video useful and if you like my content please subscribe or hit the like button so i can continue making these videos so that's all for now bye